Hey guys, Luke with Logical Across here, and today we're going to be going over my special feature review of the game of the week. Definitely the best game I saw this weekend, and that is Virginia at Syracuse, a matchup between number 13, number 12 in the country. Definitely lived up to the hype. Crazy plays, big hits, crazy goals, just basically everything you want in a game. The crowd was into it. It was a lot of fun. So let's get into this. So, like all my special features, we're going to get into the stats and my players of the game before I do kind of tell you guys more about the story of the game and kind of analyze what happened per quarter. So, this game took place in front of a home crowd of 3,868 people, which is awesome for a lacrosse game. Syracuse always brings the home crowd, which is very cool. But And this game really looked like it was going to go Syracuse's way. It seemed like the whole game... Virginia was one goal or two goals away from, from tying the game. But they ended the game on a 6-1 run, which allowed them to get to overtime and eventually win. So that's what made the difference. Syracuse kind of collapsed at the end. It was also good plays by Virginia. But shots favored Virginia, 46-42. Not a lot of turnovers this game. 12 for Virginia, 9 for Syracuse. Really made it a nice, fun game to watch. You could tell these teams are both very good. Syracuse has clearly improved since that Colgate loss. Ground balls, 30-16 favoring Virginia. One thing for Virginia that was really bad early on was they were only 12 of 18 on their clears. Their deep poles definitely struggled to clear early. Syracuse did do a good job riding, though. They were definitely, they scored off of an interception. I think Voigt did, and it was a really good play. They intercepted the goalie. Virginia goalie did get pulled in the third. But face-offs even, 16-14, favoring Virginia. But they made the face-offs more when they mattered. It looked like Syracuse was really winning the face-offs early on. But Virginia at the end, uh, my player of the game for Virginia, really made a difference on the face-offs for the Cavs. But man up, Virginia really was bad on the man up. Two for nine. They honestly did not deserve to win with how bad their man up was. Granted, the Syracuse man down D was really good, but Virginia's man up was also pretty bad. They dropped it a lot. I mean, they'd have a shot cocked, and the guy would cat go to catch it, and he'd whiff on the ball. It was pretty pretty ugly man up. But Syracuse was one for three, so they got one conversion off of that, but they failed on the other two. Really failed to convert off of a really bad call the refs made against a Virginia player. I think it was Greco on a huge hit. It was awesome. My favorite hit I've seen in a long time, but the rest called a hit to the head, which was not even close to a hit to the head. You guys know what I'm talking about if you watch the game. But players of the game, we'll start with Virginia, and I got Ryan Conrad. He had two goals, but he had seven ground balls, and he was a monster on the faceoff wing. He's really the reason Virginia got these late game ground balls. He was there every time to make the clutch ground ball pickup. And the other player of the game for Virginia, I got Michael Kraus. He had three goals, three assists. He played very well. Definitely is advertised. But for Syracuse, I got Bradley Voigt, a hat trick. He did really well. And I got Tyson Bomberry. He's a deep pull, if you didn't know. He had three ground balls, but he was everywhere. He played great on his matchups. Really, the opposing attackman really struggled to get around him. It was really fun to watch him play his man in the 1v1s because he did a great job. But that's more of the statistics, so I'll get more into the story of the game now. But it started right away. Syracuse got a penalty like 20 seconds into the game, and there were a lot of penalties in this game. I will say the ref, the officiating, I don't like to rip on the officiating, but it was not very good this game. There were some bad calls against both teams. It's pretty frustrating. They kind of really intervened a lot, but I'm not going to get on a soapbox about it, but it was, it was not very good, which was definitely kind of a bummer for such a good game, and it really hurt Syracuse in overtime. But So yeah, Syracuse kills a man down right away, kind of the story of the game. Their man down was dominant. Virginia pulls, really sloppy clearing early, bad passes, got pushed into doubles, turn it over. They, Syracuse had great interior defense, did not let Virginia get an opening on the shot. Good goal, Both goalies played well to start the game. First goal came from Syracuse at X. It was a 1v1 matchup. A Syracuse player just beat his man, wraps around, gets a good goal. Then Virginia scores by one guy shot it. It bounces off the goaltender, and then the ball was in the air. 
and one of the, the a guy ran down the crease, jumped up in the air, caught it in the air, and then kind of did a dunk on the goal. It was pretty cool. So that tied it up, one to one, and then we did see a crease dive. It was a goal at first, but they called it off for Syracuse because he hit the goaltender. I'm not a big fan of the crease dive. I kind of hate it as a D guy. I know I'm kind of weird not being for the crease dive, but it's not fair for the if you should be if you can do a crease dive. Then I think the D pole should be allowed to push guys into the crease, They're just to make it a little fair, because you can't you can't really defend him when he's doing that. I mean, you can't push him in the crease, but he can jump in. I mean, I don't know. I don't think that's very fair. But that one got called off because it hit the goalie. Then Virginia gets another man up, drops the ball. I was talking about that a little earlier. Uh, it was number five. He caught. He had it like this, wide open for a shot at uh, top side, and. He went to catch it. It just rolled right out when he went to shoot. It was pretty ugly. Syracuse picked up the ground ball and took it down. And they scored off of that. A nice bounce shot. Kind of a low to low bounce shot. But it changed the angle of off the bounce. So Syracuse got a good goal off of that. And then on a clear. Virginia again kind of slapped it on the clears. Goalie passes it. I think it was Voigt. Jumps up. Catches it in the air and scores. So it's 3-1 Syracuse. They look really good. Virginia gets man up. Fails again on the man up. But a buzzer beater goal for Virginia. They get on to crease and score, make it 3-2 at the end of the first. So the first quarter was really exciting, but Syracuse was definitely looking better than Virginia. Like I could tell, I was like, yeah, they look a little better than Virginia. Definitely less sloppy. But it opens up, Virginia forcing a shot clock violation on Syracuse. And then Virginia gets the ball, and they score on crease, so it's tied 3-3. Really at the end of the game, Syracuse gets the lead, and then lets Virginia tie it. And then... Virginia gets a lead, which was really, I think this was their only lead besides at the end. But Virginia goes around X. Both posts were covered. It was, say, say this is kind of goal, the actual frame. The goalie was on the right side. D pole was on the left. But Virginia guy wraps around X. And the D guy, he if he would have had a stick in his left hand, would have been able to get a poke on him to probably stop him. But he had it right handed. I know he's right handed. But that gave the extra angle to the Virginia attackman, and then he scored off that. It was a great play. It was a backhanded goal. I mean, it was, it was a good goal. I mean, but that, that's kind of what happened. If, if he had it in his left hand, it would have been a little harder for the attackman to score there. And then, so, 4-3, and then Syracuse, a 1v1 up dodge up top down the alley, ties it up. Really good goal. And then they do the same exact thing to make it 5-4. No one really slid to the player, to the guy with the ball in both those instances. They're basically the same goals, and that that they had to adjust on that for Virginia. Then you, the you, Virginia gets a man up. They fail again, so they're over four now. And then they get a two man up, and they finally score. They get up top and score. Still almost didn't score. The time was running out. I mean, if they didn't score on a two man, that would have been really bad. But it's five five. Then, but oh, that one goal, it on the replay, it did not look like the ball crossed the line all the way. So, just kind of a, a food for thought there. If we need an instant replay in lacrosse, because you got to have the ball cross the whole goal line extended. You have to have it cross the whole thing. It did really didn't look like it went cross all the way to me. But whatever, Virginia gets the break there. I mean, sometimes you need a break, and they got it. Bad break for Syracuse. And then Syracuse gets a man up finally, and they score right away up top in the middle of the of the box. And then Syracuse gets another man up. It fails. Then Syracuse dodges down the right alley later, and they score and make it 7-5. And then Virginia gets a buzzer beater, a two-on-two -on, -two on the wing. And I think it was Laviano slips down, gets wide open, scores with the, about three seconds left or something like that. And it... Makes it 7-6, so Virginia got two buzzer-beating goals to end both quarters in the first half. So it goes into halftime, 7-6 Syracuse. Syracuse definitely looking better in the first half. It looked like Virginia was kind of just holding on, but I had my doubts that they were going to be able to come back. And then game, second half starts, Virginia comes right out, or excuse me, Syracuse comes right out, scores to make it 8-6. Then Virginia gets a nice roll dodge up top to get top side. On his, on his man to make it 8-7 Syracuse. And then Syracuse scores right away to make it 9-7, dodging down the alley. Then some shot clock violations. Virginia then made their goalie change. 
And then we had this really bad call. It was number 44 for Virginia. The Syracuse was clearing. Goalie passes up to his LSM. He catches it, turns, and then he gets hit laid out. And the rest call a penalty on Virginia saying it was a hit to the head. And if you watch the clip, Inside the Lacrosse has it on their Instagram. And, like, Lacrosse Cave and all those guys. But if you see the hit, he clearly lowers his shoulder and hits him right where I'm touching. It was an awful call. I mean, I think that was as clean as a hit as I've really ever seen. I mean, I cannot believe they call it. That's just pathetic. The NCAA just hates the scary hits. You know, they're kind of babies about it. They look to take the final game. I think that's a totally clean hit, and that was a great hit. So Syracuse does not score on that man, which I was glad of because they did not deserve to have that man up. But so then Virginia kills that. Then Virginia scores. They get a one-timer on the crease to make it 9-8. to eight. Then Syracuse scores again 10-8. Really a back-and-forth game. Really, like I said, Syrac Virginia would make it a one-goal game, and then Syracuse would get a two-goal game. That's kind of what I was thinking. That's ah, all good. And then near the end of the third, Syracuse scores again to make it 11-8. And I was thinking, ah. Uh, I mean, it's third quarter, but I was like, oh, no. It's not looking good for Virginia here. But then Virginia gets a wraparound goal from X. Inside post. Bad coverage there by the goalie is right on his inside leg. I mean, he had the post cover, but he left a kind of a hole open in where his leg is, like kind of around here, and that's why it got in. So it was 11-9 at the end of the third, but it looked like Syracuse was kind of starting to pull away. Momentum was on their side, and then the start to start the last quarter, Syracuse scored low to low. It was a really bad goal to allow. So it was 12-9 then, and then they score again. Virginia bailed two clears in a row, and the second one kind of comes back to bite them in the butt. And as Syracuse then gets a transition goal, it's a beautiful goal, um, a lot of passes. I mean, the goalie had no chance, so then it's 13-9. And then Sarah, Virginia kind of gets on a little bit of a run here. I was thinking it's not looking good. I mean, all the momentum was on Syracuse's side. Virginia had no life, but then Virginia scores. It was pretty cool. The guy was sliding, like, backwards. I don't know if you can see me there when I slid like, backwards, but he was sliding backwards, shot it, and got it. I mean, I couldn't believe he scored to make it 13-10. And then Virginia gets a two-man up, and they score down the right side uh, on the top of the box, and they make it 13-11. Then Virginia, fundamentals, sloppy when they're about to get back into the game. Some high passes. They were kind of sloppy on some of their fundamentals, but they score. They get an invert. They got Conrad at X on the short stick midi. And he gets around and makes it 13-12. And then Virginia gets another man up and fails. And I was thinking, oh, they're going to lose now because you guys know how I love my man ups. And they didn't convert off that man up. It was just not looking good. But Syracuse then takes it down. The deep hole takes it down. Runs all the way behind X like an LSA. Then sees the open man. Passes it. Goal for Syracuse. And I was thinking, that's ah, probably going to do it. There wasn't much time left. But I was wrong as Virginia then wins the faceoff. Virginia deep hole on transition, takes it down, shoots and scores to make it 14-13. And I was like, wow, they, these guys will not give up. It was This was crazy. And then Vir Virginia, with one minute left, scores off a question mark dodge to make it 14-14. Then we go to overtime. Really exciting. Going into overtime, Syracuse gets called on a penalty for pushing the crease. But Virginia still fails on that man up. And I was thinking, oh man, they're going to, how can they win with this many failed man ups? But, and it looked like they were holding it too long. Michael Kraus, I believe it was number three for Virginia. He held the ball way too long. So I was thinking, ah oh, man, this guy's really blowing it for his team. Uh, the announcer said it too, Quinn Kresnick. He said it's some hero ball. I mean, they're holding it too long trying to be the guy when they got to move it. But then. They drew a slide, I think it was number three. He drew the slide, passed, skip passes it through the defense, caught, and it's a goal. Virginia wins 15-14. It was crazy. Syracuse fans booing. But so that that was the kind of the game sum up. But it was a good game by both teams. I would say Syracuse has definitely improved from their Colgate loss. I mean, they looked good. I mean, no dis no hate on Syracuse. They really probably should have won, but they kind of collapsed at the end. And the refs called some pretty bad calls on them, to be honest, as well as they did on Virginia. But Virginia, they needed a win like this. Sometimes when you're a team, you win some games you don't deserve to win, but it really turns the season around. 
or it really builds up momentum, and I think this might have been that game for Virginia. We'll see, though. I mean, who knows? They could lay. With how this lacrosse season's going, they might get this big win and lose the next game. That's kind of what's happened to a lot of teams. But this was an awesome game, definitely the game of the week, and that kind of sums up all, all of this game. So guys, that'll do it for my special feature review on the Virginia at Syracuse lacrosse game. Again, it was 15-14 Virginia in overtime. It was a super exciting game. So if you guys enjoyed this and like this kind of stuff, please feel free to leave a like and subscribe. It really helps grow up the channel, and I truly appreciate it. Also, if you want more content like this in between YouTube videos, check out my Instagram or Twitter at logical underscore lacrosse. And I also have a website with plenty of blogs and, and reviews and all that kind of stuff at www.logicallacrosse.com. So guys, thank you again so much for watching, and as always, have a good rest of your day.